On the 29th of January 2019, a couple of friends were getting ready for a day of hunting in the desert surrounding the town of Apple Valley in California. Deer, wild pigs, antelope and elk are among the animals that they were expecting to find during their trip. What they found, however, was none of those animals. The area they were in was flat, with almost no brush or cacti to speak of, which made it easy to spot animals, their bodies standing out against a light coloured ground. As they walked, one of them just happened to look down, his eyes catching on something as he did so. Being a hunter, he knew bone when he saw it, and finding animal bones out in the desert was nothing unusual, but something about what he saw didn't sit right with him. So, he knelt down to get a closer look. He got a good look at the bone, and then immediately stood up and called over his hunting partner, pointing at his discovery so he, too, could take a look. The two then immediately called the authorities to report what they had found. Police arrived quickly and the site was cordoned off as investigators and detectives prepared for an extensive search of the area. What the men had found was a human jawbone, and dental records revealed that it belonged to a young woman that had disappeared almost four years prior. But how had she ended up in the desert, in plain sight in a well-travelled area, without being found. This is the tragic story of Christy Stewart. Christy Stewart was a 29-year-old woman from Lucerne Valley in California. She loved animals and worked as a kennel tech at a local rescue centre. She had a good relationship with both of her parents, and was still living with them, and she was also very religious, attending church regularly. Christy had struggled with her bipolar disorder over the years, but was currently in a fairly stable position with it, although she had been weaning off her medication with the help of her doctor during recent weeks. And while she still had her bad days, like most of us do, she seemed to be doing well and was looking to the future. On the 2nd of March 2015, Christy woke up with a throbbing pain in one of her teeth. It had been that way for a while now, but she had made an appointment to have the offending tooth removed later that day. Knowing this didn't help her mood though, and as someone that really can't stand toothache, I can understand why she might have been feeling fed up. After getting up and ready for the day, she headed downstairs and spoke to her father about how she was feeling, but she didn't mention the appointment she had scheduled. Her dad reassured her, telling her that she was loved and that everything would be okay. He also suggested that maybe she should go for a walk around the park to clear her head, and maybe just relax a bit. Christy agreed that a walk sounded like a good idea, and after a brief smile, she left the house. That would be the last time her father would see her alive. From her home, Christy made her way to the Jess Ranch dental practice located in the nearby Apple Valley, hoping that they would be able to put an end to the throbbing pain she had been feeling in her tooth. Unfortunately, the tooth had become infected, which meant that the dentist was unable to safely remove it until she had finished a full course of antibiotics. Workers from the dental practice would later comment that Christy was visibly upset by this news and seemed agitated, a mood that worsened when Christy realised that she couldn't find her car or house keys. Obviously incredibly frustrated by the situation she was in, Christy looked all around the practice for her keys and emptied out her bag, but they were nowhere to be seen. Eventually, she gave up looking, as she did have a spare car key and exited the building, heading to the nearby Rite Aid pharmacy to pick up the antibiotics she had been prescribed. She was meant to be staying at a friend's house that night and phoned them, A, to let off some steam about her appointment, and B, to let them know that she would be on her way shortly. Both the dentist and the pharmacy were located on a retail park with several other shops, one of which was Bed Bath & Beyond, which is where Christy headed next. She used the bathroom in the shop and then left, heading down the side of the building towards a fairly secluded area of the car park. The parking spots in this area are almost completely hidden from the view of the other shops, and it is also not where Christy had parked her truck, so it is unknown why she headed in this direction. 
And that is all we know about Christie's movements that day, as, sadly, she would never be seen or heard from again. When Christie didn't show up at her friend's house later that evening, and didn't contact her parents the following morning either, those close to her began to worry. It was very out of character for her to not speak to her parents at all during that time, and after speaking to all of Christie's friends, none of whom had heard from her, her parents raised their concerns with the police. Unfortunately, the police believed that Christie, as a 29-year-old woman, had merely gone somewhere without telling her parents, and as such, they listed her as voluntary missing. The fact that she suffered from bipolar disorder most likely played a role in this classification too, since it may have made the police believe that acting out of character was just part of her illness. But what does the label of voluntary missing mean exactly? Being classed as voluntary missing has a couple of effects on how police handle the case. Firstly, the classification implies that there is no foul play suspected, which influences the protocols followed when dealing with evidence and information surrounding the missing person. Secondly, there may be a delay in investigators even looking into the missing person, due to them being fairly low on the priority list, as it is assumed that they are not in any danger and are instead simply taking some time away without telling the people around them. And finally, there will be little to no media coverage about the missing person, which, as you can imagine, means that people won't be on the lookout, as, well, they simply don't know that they should be. So, with Christy listed as voluntary missing, police would do some simple information gathering, like speaking to her friends and trying to figure out where she could have gone. Then, on the 8th of March, six days after Christy had been last seen, her pickup truck was located in a remote area to the north of Apple Valley. No trace of Christy, though. Now, this is where her being listed as voluntary missing really has a big impact. As no foul play was suspected, police were not required to process the truck on the scene. Instead, the truck was processed after it had been towed out of the desert. This means that any forensic evidence would likely be contaminated by the tow truck driver, who had access to the inside of the truck. Police found Christie's antibiotics in the truck, along with her glasses, bra and shoes, but they didn't find her phone. A few days later, that missing phone pinged a tower 15 miles away from where the truck had been found. This gave investigators hope that Christy had indeed just taken some time away for herself, but her parents were adamant that she would have contacted them by now. Then, around the 25th of March, Christy's parents went to pick up her truck from the impound and as soon as they walked up to the vehicle, they spotted Christie's phone. The bright red phone stood out against the black bench seat, making it impossible to miss, which begs the questions, who put it there? And when? The voluntary missing designation would be changed to suspicious missing after a month, which meant that police could begin investigating more seriously. Bloodhounds used around the retail centre tracked Christie's scent right up until she left the Bed Bath and & Beyond, and headed around the back. Her scent then vanished, meaning that she most likely got into a vehicle, whether voluntarily or otherwise, is unknown. Hounds used around the area where her truck was found were unable to pick up her scent anywhere nearby. It would take over a year to process Christie's phone and laptop, and ultimately, police found nothing of use. And so, with no leads, the case went cold quickly. Even after her remains were discovered by those hunters almost four years later, just a couple of miles away from where her truck had been found. No definitive cause of death has been released, so her family were left with no answers as to what had happened to her. Mental Health I think it is important to address Christie's diagnosis of bipolar disorder, both in relation to how she may have actually been feeling, and in response to how others view people with mental health issues. When some people hear that the victim had mental health issues, they automatically assume that they must have done this to themselves, either on purpose or by accident. Taken to an extreme example, this can read as something like, the crazy lady just wandered out into the desert and got lost during an episode. 
This view of mental illness can be incredibly harmful, as it can often lead to people not taking things as seriously as they otherwise would. On the other hand, we can't completely ignore the impact that mental health issues can have on a person, and it is possible for someone to become confused and vulnerable, especially if they haven't been taking their medication. As was mentioned earlier, Christy had been weaning herself off her medication, and any of you who have had to do this will know that this can be a very unpleasant experience. Nausea, headaches and dizziness are fairly common side effects, and will leave anybody feeling irritable and off balance. Christy was doing this under the supervision of her doctor, but I wasn't able to find anything explaining why this was being done. Regardless of the reasoning, it could certainly have impacted Christy's mood that day. However, I would like to point out that she did have an infected tooth, which I don't know about you, but that would definitely have put me in a foul mood. Unfortunately, it seems like the statements made by the staff in the dentist office have been framed in a particular way in many articles to make it seem like she was unreasonably agitated, most likely due to her diagnosis. But let's think about this for a second. How would you feel if you were in her situation? You had been in a ton of pain for days now, waiting for this appointment, only to be told you would have to wait even longer, and then on top of that, you realise that you've lost your keys. I would guess that most of us would be pretty irritated by that point, and I don't think that, that would be unreasonable at all. Of course, it is still possible that Christy had some sort of mental break, but that doesn't explain how her truck ended up where it did, with no scent of her in the area. It also doesn't explain how her phone just randomly reappeared in her truck. It is also worth mentioning that several people claim to have seen Christy after her disappearance, but none of these sightings were ever confirmed, and since there was a $10,000 reward for information, people's motives for reporting a sighting have to be taken into account. Accident of course, as with any tragedy, we have to consider that sometimes accidents happen, and there may not be any nefarious goings on. Had Christy taken her father's advice of going for a walk to clear her head, and gotten lost or disorientated in the desert? Deserts are known to be dangerous places. They can reach searing temperatures during the day, and then plummet to freezing temperatures once night falls. Christy probably wasn't dressed for the cold, and since she left the retail park at about 5pm, it's not out of the realms of possibility that she got caught out there once it got dark, and just couldn't find her way back. This might explain the clothing in the car. Perhaps she had changed into more suitable shoes for a hike, along with a sports bra and sunglasses. But again, why had the dogs not picked up her trail at her truck if that was the case? And why would Christy have told her friend that she was on her way if she planned on going on a hike? And of course, this still doesn't explain the phone. Abduction With any disappearance, especially one that ends in remains being found, we have to consider that somebody else may be involved. The police may not have initially believed that there was any foul play, but the family did, and eventually, police did catch up and change gears. The bloodhounds tracking Christy to the back of the Bed Bath & Beyond store, where the trail ended, seemed to point to her getting in a vehicle that wasn't her own. So, had she bumped into somebody that she knew in the store? If so, who? And why would she leave with them when she was meant to be going to her friend's house? Well, unfortunately, due to how the case was handled in the early stages, we don't have the CCTV footage from the area, as by the time police began to seriously investigate, all the tapes had been written over. If this person had less than charitable intentions, things could have easily and quickly gone wrong for Christy. It isn't possible to know what happened to her during that time, but we do know that she ended up buried in the desert, without her shoes, glasses and bra. Her captor could have taken her glasses and shoes off as a way to prevent her from running away, and, well, I'm sure you don't need me to spell out why they could have removed her bra. 
the perpetrator could have gone back to the shopping centre and driven Christie's truck up to the desert as a way to delay any reports of her being missing. How they got the keys for the truck is something that I would like to touch on briefly. Christie kept a spare key for her truck in the sun visor, which she must have used after leaving the dentist. Her kidnapper could have taken this off her at some point, thus allowing them to gain access to the vehicle later. However, there is also the issue of the missing keys. Had somebody taken them, and used them later to get into the truck? I found one mention of the keys being handed into the dentist office, and if that was true, it would be interesting to know where they were found, and by who. With the mention of desert, you would be forgiven for thinking that Christy was buried out in the middle of nowhere, but in reality, the area was a well-travelled one, with very little vegetation and is a popular spot for off-road activities. And with this in mind, it seems strange that it took almost four years for her to be found, assuming that she had been in the same location the whole time. Of course, it could just be that her remains had been very well buried and had only been brought to the surface recently due to heavy rains. Something else that I feel worth mentioning in relation to this case is that another woman named Christina Bastian also went missing in the Apple Valley area in October of the same year. She had been staying at a friend's house when she suddenly left in the middle of the night. Some of her belongings, her dog and her car were all found in different locations around the town, but Christina herself has never been seen since. Both women had been diagnosed with bipolar disorder and both were weaning off their medications. Of course, there may be no relation at all, but I thought it was worth mentioning. And with that, there's just one final thing to talk about, the phone. Since the phone had pinged 15 miles away, and then appeared in the truck days later, we know that somebody had been in possession of it. Was that person the one who had been responsible for Christie's disappearance? And if so, how had they managed to put the phone back in the truck afterwards? Another possible angle on this is that someone working for the towing company had taken the phone. While I'm sure that many of us would like to believe that nobody would do that, it is sadly fairly common for people to steal things, especially when given a fairly risk-free opportunity. In this case, the truck had been sat in the desert for days and the police hadn't yet processed the vehicle, so who would know that the phone had been there? Christie's truck had to be driven by a tow truck operator to a nearby road before it could be towed, so they definitely had access to it. It also explains how the phone ended up back in the truck. Whoever took it probably realised that this case was beginning to move in a much more serious direction and they didn't want to get caught in possession of the phone, so they simply snuck the phone back into the truck. Whatever the reason, if Christie's disappearance had been taken more seriously from the start, her truck would have been processed at the scene and they may have found the phone, along with other physical evidence, before it had the chance to be tampered with or contaminated. They would have been able to access the CCTV at the retail park and maybe piece together her movements along the roads by using footage from other cameras in the area. But even so, there is no guarantee that they would have been able to save her, or even truly figure out what happened to her. Sadly, unless somebody comes forward with new information, it is unlikely that we will ever know what happened to Christy Stewart. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the channel and leave any suggestions for future videos down in the comment section below. Thanks for joining me for this story, and keep yourself safe out there.